Are you ready to dream on? Do you know how to fly high and soar among the clouds? Get ready to live adventurously because the Laura Meeks Show starts now. Listen as Laura lifts you off the ground while teaching you how to fly high. Forget ground level drama and be prepared to confront your dreams head on as she encourages you to navigate towards your North Star and into what just might be the best life you've imagined. Dream on, live adventurously on The Laura Meeks Show. I am just excited as always to be here with you. Um, I welcome you all. I'm sending out all my love to all of us that are out here in this new, what I would call our new normal. This is, uh, it's interesting. Uh, This show has always been broadcast uh, via Zoom and Facebook Live. So for us, it's not that different. But for a lot of people that are out there, this this is a hot like their whole new normal. One of the things that I wanted to start the show with today was the uh, was this idea is is that in this land of new normal, this I think is the perfect chance for you guys that are listening to sit back and ask yourself. Uh, I like this question: What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> At sixty five. I can, I'm still reinventing myself and doing new things. And and for a lot of people, this this is probably the biggest change that they have seen in their life. This Everybody's shutting down the country. It's lasting months longer than we ever thought. It could last even longer. But that is a perfect, perfect chance. To ask yourself, what will my new normal be? What do I want to be when this new normal comes? Who do I want to work for? Will I stay? You know, some of you are wondering whether your job is going to be there. Ask yourself, is that the job you want to go back to? And if not, what can I do now to prepare myself for my new normal? What do I want to be? Uh, my my tagline is dream on, fly high, and live adventurously. So the cue there is to figure out what your dream is. How are you going to use your resources to get there? And what adventure do you want to go on? Because <laughs> there's tons, tons of adventures to have. I've had many. Um, today is very special. I have some good friends uh, with me. Marcus and Sheila are here. Um, Marcus and Sheila have a incredible uh, site and a business called Ask. Theo, A-S-K-T-H-E-O, AskTheo.com. And they have a show. Uh, Sheila will tell us about uh, how she manifests the archangel beings. Uh, they uh, speak through one voice and they and they speak through Sheila. So those of you who are uh, Abraham Hicks fans or uh, are aware of that part of our world, she was the real deal. She's the one, she's the one that Esther originally talked to, and I'll let her. I'll let her tell some of that story. But uh, they have some incredible insights and incredible uh, stories to tell. Marcus uh, is the proud survivor of a flight with me as a pilot in a glider. Uh, we had an incredible adventure. Uh, when they were out here in Palm Springs. Uh, so he is brave beyond belief <laughs> to, go, to go with me. So I, I welcome you, Marcus and Sheila. Thank you so much for sharing some time with us. Uh, to me, this is, there's so many cool things we got to talk about. So uh, is, did I, am I introducing you? Did I get most of that right? Oh, you got it right, Laura. Hey, it's really good to see you. You oh, know, we miss seeing yeah. each other. You know, don't we miss seeing each other? This is the second best thing we can do, though. This, I mean, I have been doing my work for 50 years and uh, working with the 12 archangels known as Thea, which you referenced. And Marcus has been working with me now for 23 of those 50 years in Ask Theo and sharing the wisdom of Theo throughout the world. And Theo is 12 archangels speaking in one voice. Um, when this, I had a near-death experience that was a catalyst for me opening to doing what is now 
known as channeling, but then it was known as trance mediumship, direct voice. And so I've been doing this a long time. And to your point, Esther was a client of mine and I mentored her and Theo inspired her to begin channeling Abraham and feel very fortunate and blessed to be just a small part of that work that she's been doing throughout the world and very successfully. And uh, to let the audience know, uh, I have had a, a real blessing and I still listen to the recording. Uh, I was blessed to meet Theo personally uh, and have an hour with Theo uh, to answer all my specific questions. And uh, part of the blessing was that was recorded. You gave me that recording. And, uh, and that has been very, very helpful to me. And, and I think helpful to a lot, of, a lot of people. One of the things I want to kind of start out with, uh, you guys, is, the, is if you kind of comment, we're obviously deep in the middle of, of a change that, as I said in the beginning, most people have not seen this. You know, my parents grew up through the Depression, World War II. Uh, you know, we survived Vietnam and, and Martin Luther King. <laughs> I mean, that there was some trauma in the 60s, 70s. But my my kids are really clear to say that there there are people right now that are listening that probably have not even experienced the world without the Internet. And I think for those people, I mean, there are a lot of people that this is the newest, biggest, oh, my God, is the world going to end? What am I going to do thing? And it, and, it, and it causes some anxiety. So kind of my question to you is, is that you have contact with your whole uh, following. What are, the, what, are, what are their concerns? What are they asking, Theo, and what, what, are, the, what are the vibrations you're getting? Well, you know, we, we have had the, the blessing, Laura, as you know, of doing several webinars for our community, complimentary webinars on, on, on COVID-19 and the related topics, right? But I have to go back for just a second. I have to ask you, first of all, it's so great to be here with you and see you again. It's been a while. And yes, I, I am the survivor of a glider flight <laughs> with, with uh, Laura Meeks, uh, pilot extraordinaire, which I think maybe even kind of prepared me for this time we're in right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but uh, but to, yeah, to, your, a very fun to your question, to your question, um, our community is expressing the same, has the same questions, the same fears, the same concerns, uh, the same, perhaps seeing the same opportunities, perhaps too, that many people are seeing in this time as everybody else on the planet, right? I mean, this is a universal, global, uh, uh, you know, pandemic. And there isn't a single one of us that isn't touched by this in a significant way. And I loved your question about what do we want to be when we grow up as we, uh, you know, because the, the, the level of questions that we're asking ourselves throughout this time is going to determine the outcomes for each and every one of us. My only question for you is, do we have to grow up? That's the only piece of that I'm, I'd, I'd like to not have to maybe grow up. But, but, um, but, but I think... But I think uh, I, I think that there's a sense of optimism. I think there's a sense of hope. I think there's a sense of a this new normal that you were talking about is going to be very different. And and the questions also come up, Laura. Why would we want to go back to the old ways of being? Oh. Um, this is a time that Theo's been talking about for decades. And they said to us recently, we told you this time was coming. We just didn't tell you exactly how it was going to unfold. But this is the time. This is it. This is that, that, that time. And we all get to start asking ourselves that same question that you just asked. Who do I really want to be? What do I really want to do? You know, and, and uh, don't let a great pandemic go to waste without something really positive going on, you know, happening on the other side of this thing for each and every one of us. Right, Sheila? I love that. Don't let a good pandemic go to waste. You know, we've gotten to realize that we're a global community, all of us. It's not us and them. It's us. We are one species on this planet. And Thea, when I was writing my first book, The Fifth Dimension, Channels to a New Reality, 40 years ago, they were predicting this in that book that this time of change, the fifth dimensionary energy fully in place about the planet, that everything would change. And they told us several years ago that the 
2020 would be the most important election that we would have because people were talking in 2008, was well, this the big election and the, you know, and before, and they said, no, they said it, they're all important, but 2020. And it was like far enough away that we're going, Oh, well, okay. You know, yeah, but well, he, here we are now and we have all this going on, but they said we'd recognize that we're one species and the world is going to change through this in a positive way. So I'm very optimistic. Yeah. I, I, I am very optimistic too. I, I, 2016, I went back in my notes and uh, 2016, uh, you and I were chatting and we asked Theo, I think this was on one of your uh, webinars. We asked Theo, you know, we've got this new guy in the office and he's, you know, it's like people are really anxious. I did a whole radio show on, you know, if you're really anxious about who won this election, you know, think of the positive things. And one of the things that Theo said at the time was that, you know, p- part of this acknowledgement is, is that we have a collective um, consciousness, perhaps uh, you may use different terms, but but that America in particular is itching for a change, and this is what we got. This is you, this is what we manifested. You know, I, I there, we can talk about manifestation also. <laughs> I've oh, done, sure. I've, I've got a lot of fun stories about manifesting, but but you know, on a personal level, you can manifest your personal life, but. I think as a country, we were all itching. And I, I really do think that uh, in that in that election, there a lot of people voted just because we had gotten to a spot where the Democrats and Republicans really, uh, whoever gets elected, I think kind of everybody was kind of like, hey, what does it matter? You know, they're all kind of the same. The, you know, they start way out here and then they work themselves by the election there. You can hardly tell the difference. And then policies shift a little and people are like, you know, this stuff has got to change in my life. I want somebody to change. Now, the funny thing is, oh my God, we didn't, I didn't know I was asking for this. <laughs> or I think people were a little shocked at, at, at how that changed, but reflect on uh, this, how, how we all are, are looking at this global thing. Cause as you said, we, I think one of the big value plus out of this is we all realize that, holy smokes, whether you're rich or poor, black or white, minority, the virus gets you or can get you. doesn't matter what country you're in or you know, where you are, it's coming. And- uh, for, yeah, the first question we asked the Laura, um, the very first webinar we did after COVID-19 hit and we all are home, I asked Theo, how do they see, how does our world look to them right now? And they said, we see a world with absolutely no borders, no borders. And so to your, to your question and to Sheila's point earlier, it's a global community finally coming together. You know, Uh, the divisiveness, the the hatred, the vitriol. um, Yeah, sure. There's still going to be some, but it's not going to run our lives. It's not going to rule the day as it has certainly. And not just in our country, but in many countries around the world, if they experience the same kind of divisiveness. So if this softens people's hearts just a little bit, if it opens up their minds just a little bit, if it gives them the opportunity to dream a little bigger and, and maybe have a little higher expectation for a, a world that's different than the one that we left behind us here, it's going to be a good thing. And you're going to see a collective uh, building globally as, as the, the months and the years you know go on coming forward from this, this experience. And it's going to be, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a um, a new day. It's just going to be a new I, 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 day. I said earlier, I'm very I'm very hopeful that there there is a a new awakening as yeah. to really what this is about. One of the things I wrote in my notes, and I and I love this analogy. I don't know if you uh, have seen this movie. I think it's a 1990s movie called Independence Day. Mm-hmm. And and the challenge is 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 that you know the whole world is down here. We're fighting for all our borders and everything. And then oh my God, the aliens come in. And, and the ending of it, what I absolutely love about the ending of the movie is, is that all of a sudden it's humans against aliens. I mean, they, the Iraqis and the Russians and the Chinese were all together, working together to fight this outer enemy. And in some regard, that's kind of the COVID-19 is like, oh, my God, we, you know, hey, what do you know, China? What do you know, India, France? You know, uh, tell me, let's figure this out because, like, we're all we're all in this thing. So I, I think in that sense that there's a lot of good coming. 
Well, now for all the decades uh, that Theo's been talking about this, they said the sciences and the arts will bring us together because there are no borders between scientists and artists, that they are collaborators. And they'll bring forth a new way of being, you know, in health and well-being. And, of course, we need the arts for our hearts and for our souls. So um, it just makes sense. And to Marcus's point, when Marcus asked them, how do you see our world now? And they said, there are no there are no separations between you. We have oceans and rivers and stuff that separates land mass, but they said our borders are just lines on a paper that they see no lines between us and that we're one species and that this, that will be brought together in the highest good of everybody, because that's what's necessary. Well, and you already know this from your work. I mean, once you went to the internet platform to bring Theo to the world, you literally have a global following. I mean, that people yes. can, can connect to your webinar from anywhere. And it's so exciting, Laura, to your point about there are people probably listening to this that never were without the internet. But <laughs> I remember the the day. Yeah, or the dial telephone or several people on a telephone line. Party line. It's like, like, I know. It's like, what? But the thing for me was, is Theo told me that this time was coming and this is how we would be connecting and their message would be global. And I'm sitting there in the mountains of Colorado with three little kids being told this, that this is the reach of their work. And I'm just, I have to trust because I have some personal things that were being affirmed that I trusted, but I couldn't see, I couldn't see this time. I just said, okay. And just put one foot in front of the other and kept doing the work and kept uh, sharing the information. And, and then the internet came along and to your point, we have a, a wonderful global community that Theo teaches. And um, every time we do a webinar, Laura, I got to tell you, Kathy um, puts up a map with little points where everybody's from. And I, I get huge God bumps every time I see that map because it's just so delicious. It's just so wonderful to be able to connect i coined the phrase global living room for our webinars because it doesn't matter where we are in the world or what time of day or night it is we're gathered right there in that moment to share the wisdom and it's just so exciting yeah one of the things that i when i one of the things i do on thursdays is postmaster which is a speaking platform Mm -hmm. familiar with um and we have since the you know typically we met at Denny's you know <laughs> we can have breakfast together and do these little speeches but then it went into into the Zoom internet world when we couldn't all gather and last week we had two people from Israel and uh, one from France I think and that all of a sudden Toastmasters which is worldwide publishes you know kind of where everybody is and, and all of a sudden people are connecting. Uh, we had a meeting on on Monday. I, sadly, I missed it, but the, from Australia, the Australians were having their breakfast meeting. The other thing I think is funny because there's a pilot. I flew all around the world, and one of the challenges of flying around the world is is you have to figure out what time is it wherever you're going to be. You know, if I'm going to go bomb France or Russia or someplace, you know, we all got to meet at the same time, and we all don't have like you know Pacific time. So we all learned how, about coordinated universal time or, or UTC so that we could do that. And all of a sudden now all these people are like, you know, we have a zoom meeting. It's like, well, what time is it over in Israel? It's like a four in the afternoon. It's like, God, it's like nine o'clock in the morning here. It's like, yeah, you know, there's a round circle and it takes a lot. They're on yeah. the Well, it's you, you, to your point, we, in our mentoring classes, we have people and, and, we do them at noon, which we can really hit the Pacific Rim and and Europe. 
so people can join in. Um, but some of them are in the evening at five o'clock Pacific time. But we have Europeans that get up in the middle of the night yeah, to we- attend, you know, and like I said, we have this gathering point together and people make it uh, a priority. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's very exciting, really exciting. We're coming up on our first break, but before we go, I, I want to touch on this real quick for the listeners. Uh, a lot of my work is is about building visions and dreams and, and encouraging that first little step that people take from the, oh, this is not really what I thought the world was going to be like into, hey, what could the world be like? Tell, talk to me about, about uh, starting visions. Uh, in, in your world, as Theo's talking to people and you're running seminars, Do you want to comment it starts, on? It just starts. It starts start? with. It starts with one thing. It start. It starts with a decision. I, I mean, everything starts with that one moment. In t- it's a, it's a moment too. It really is a moment yeah. where the thing that you've been dreaming about or thinking about, and you've heard the statement before that the mind that that can think it up is the mind that, of course, can can execute it and bring it into into manifestation into reality and. So it's just about making a decision. And once a decision gets made and, and the flag gets planted, what Theo talks about, Laura, is all of the uh, elect- electrical and energetic um, triggers that take place in the qu- within the quantum field, within this energy of the law of attraction, which is working perfectly all the time, right? So it's all related to the vibration that we're giving out with our thoughts and our, and our emotions and our feelings. And... That all stems from a point in time, one moment where a decision was actually made, and then people begin to live a vision-driven life as opposed to a fixed vision, a fixed life where there's no movement forward because they're waiting for everything to be perfect in their lives. All the circumstances and situations are now all aligned perfectly. Well, they don't ever do that. They they, they (laughs) don't. don't. But but once we make a decision for something, and it's like that out of the blue, how things start to happen, resources, people, money, ideas, you know, all tend to come together once the decision gets made. So it really just, it really is just about doing the thing, whatever that thing is to conjure up the courage to get in that, in that, in that state of being where a decision gets made. And then all, and then it all starts to unfold at that point. And the conditions and circumstances tend to get rearranged in the favor of the decision that gets made. Well, and part, part of what I, I, I'm just going to say one quick thing, and then I want you to talk about your program before we go to the break. But when we come back, I want to talk about there's that moment in your life where you're, where for me it was kind of like, oh my god, this is, I just can't do this anymore. There's got to be something more in life than this. Uh, and and again, when we come back from the break, I I just finished uh, Victor Frankel's book again. And, yeah. and man's search for meaning. So yeah. I, I want to tackle some of that when, when we come back. But before we do, uh, we've got a couple minutes before the, the break. You have you and Sheila have a program. Uh, let's talk about that. Let, before, before so we so on, May, on May 26th, we start a 12-week program uh, called the Spiritual and Psychic Exploration with Theo. It's online. We use Zoom. Uh, and it's uh, it's 12 weeks of discovery, of exploration, of fun, of empowerment. And Sheila and Theo, I'm going to turn it over to Sheila right now because this is her baby, uh, are, are the mentors as people are opening up psychically and spir- <laughs> uh, psychically and spiritually. Yeah. And so this is a program she developed, and it's 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 pretty remarkable, actually. Well, you know, Laura, when I started doing this work, I didn't have anybody to mentor me except the archangels known as Theo, and they they assisted me. And, you know, I didn't have anybody to talk to about this uh, that had any experiences that were that I was having. And so what I decided then is that I wanted to be that mentor for people because I knew if I was doing this, we all could do this. We're all connected. Well, and that and, was one of my questions is, do you think everybody has to? Absolutely. We all have psychic abilities, intuitive abilities. And we all have evidence in our lives of using them. And so 
this program was born out of my desire to be that mentor to others who are having some phenomenal and extraordinary experiences and how to let them know how we receive. There's many ways we receive information. And so we talk about that. We even experiment with one another with these phenomena. It's really fun. It's really play. Yeah. Because well, it, it's giving permission to do that play that maybe we did when we were young and then turned it off or turned down the volume on it. And this is a place where you feel safe. You can talk about these things openly without any fear of judgment. How about being with a community of people that get you and yeah, understand what you're talking about? Hugely important. And it's I, huge. I think that's a huge piece of, of having you on the show is to let people know. When we come back, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, I want to I want to tag back into that uh, because I really I know from my own experience. We do get information, but most of the time we've like turned the channel or turned the volume down. It's like, no, 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 that's not, that's not real. And I, I, I want to discuss that when you come back. So this is Laura Meeks. You're on the Laura Meeks show. We're going to take a quick break. Stick with us. Sheila and Marcus Gillette will be back in just a few minutes. Are you ready to transform your life and embrace magical experiences? Talking to Tannis with your host, Tannis McRae, is here to help you find your joy in life. Tune in live every first and third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Let's awaken your experience and create the change necessary to take back your right to choose who you are. For more about Tannis, visit TalkingToTannis.com. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show, talk radio to thrive by. I am so thrilled to be talking to all of you. We have got talk radio for all of us. Are you ready and willing and able to accept all of the abundance you can muster up in your life? Check us out at drpatshow.com, transformationtalkradio.com, transformationradio.fm. Oh, my goodness. How do you feel? Just okay? Well, how about you tune in and get ready to be more with The Healing Hour with me, Doc Martin, every third Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. I'm ready for your questions, and I can't wait to help you find the answers. Every month, we'll have a new live call-in show with innovative topics and a powerful hour of healing. To learn more about me, visit DrSharonMartin.com. See you there. I'm going to be here. You won't want to miss it. It's time to shake out your money-making truth on Soul Wisdom Abundance with Jennifer Bloom, creating wealth from spiritual health on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show is more than your roadmap to success. It's your compass to abundance through joy and ease. Jennifer Bloom teaches you about the soul's relationship to money and wealth and how improving that relationship serves both you and the world. Learn more at JenniferBloom.com. Coming to you live on TransformationTalkRadio.com is the brilliance ultimatum. Time's up with Claudette Rowley. Powerful conversations, practical innovations, and transformative solutions as Claudette and her guests delve into the possibilities and what she calls reality resistance. Join the cultural revolution and annihilate obstacles. Check it out at CulturalBrilliance.com. Tune in to Knowledge Book Radio with host Marge Potasic each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Through many experiences, Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity in its transition to the Golden Age, and it provided the truth and the answers. She now shares information from the Knowledge Book with you each week on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit USA.TheKnowledgeBook.net. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens with Colette Marie Steffen is excited to welcome Karen Benton as a monthly guest host. Tune in on the third Wednesday of each month at 8 a.m. Pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life, your health, 
your family and your well-being. Karen Benton is a mother, nurse practitioner, certified body talk practitioner, Franklin Method instructor, and owner of Limitless Living LLC. For more information about Karen, visit karenbenton.com. Hey, this is Laura Meeks. Welcome back to the Laura Meeks Show. Dream on, fly high, live adventurously. This is flying high right here. They, uh, I have my guests, Marcus and Sheila Gillette, are here with us. Uh, Sheila, we've been talking with Sheila and Marcus about uh, manifesting the entity called Theo, the, the group of entities. I, they're a group of 13, I guess, Sheila? 12. 12. I and would be number 13. You'd be <laughs> you're a player in this game. But right before the break, one of the things, and I, I really want to go back to this because, you know, as my audience is listening to this and they're thinking about, you know, man, my life is changing. Maybe I want to do something different. You know, there's a, I've had a number of times in my life, I was, a, I was an Air Force pilot. And then when I left that, I had another dream to go into business and I went into business and uh, in and amongst all of that, then many of my listeners know that I was a male pilot in the military. I made a gender transition, and now I'm a female life coach. Uh, still married. Annie and I, by the way, had our 34th anniversary uh, last week. So, congratulations. congratulations! Congratulations! That's great. Uh, so that I mean, we've had we've we've been, we've made a lot of changes, and part of part of my shtick uh, is to let people know that. I, in this land, there's a lot of, I mean, this, this land is about growth and building and building and learning and, and doing new things and change is part of that. I mean, the only constant is change, right? <laughs> so, so there's so many things that are going on. And one of the things that we were talking about before the break was this fact, we've got a, a webinar coming or a class coming up this summer, uh, starting on May 26th, right? Right. Yes. And, and this is a chance for you, the listener, you, to explore your psychic ability. Now, one of the things that I know from my own personal experience is, is that information comes from a lot of sources. We all know about the five earthly senses and we, we love to see, touch and feel. That's a, you know, that's humanoid behavior. Uh, I love the six mental faculties. I teach those a lot too, because we also have other faculties. Uh, and one of those is intuition and, and information comes in. Often people think it came out of the blue. I had this idea. I had a gut feeling. I mean, there's a lot of ways to talk about that, but that those are all just kind of manifestations of this channel that you could enhance. So Sheila, you were talking before the break. Do we all have this ability? And and uh, as you're mentoring people, tell tell me about how you can enhance people connecting that way. Well, yes, we all can do this. We all have evidence to your point in our lives where we've used our intuition. We are sentient beings. We feel that's the beauty of having a human suit, a human body. Yeah. To have those five senses and one we've always had since the beginning of time is that that fright, flight, fear syndrome. Well, how do we know when we're safe? Well, we feel it, don't we? We feel the energy in a room, in a place, in an environment if, if we're safe there. So it's an innate ability to know. And we've had moments in our lives where we knew something was going to happen without a doubt. We just knew it. The gut feeling you talked about. And people said, you know, I have a lot of synchronicities. Well, that's using our intuitive ability to know and create and manifest and to be present in those experiences. All of us dream. Some remember, some do not. Some lucid dream are aware of dreaming, you know, of being in the dream state when we're dreaming. I mean, this is all a part of our intuitive abilities. And, you know, we, 
one of the ways we get information, and particularly if we're auditory learners, we get messages. We, we hear messages in our inner mind hearing, sometimes external, but mostly inner mind hearing. Or if we're visual learners, like Marcus is. I'm a visual learner. Yeah, he gets, and we can use all of these and develop them, but we have a primary way we receive in the beginning. But Marcus gets visions, and he has strong dreams. And so he's a visionary learner. But now, over the years of acceptance of that, the other ways of receiving – the sentient feeling that we get, the the auditory, the messages that we get, we develop those as well as as we become unafraid and and release resistance to our primary way of receiving, and then the others come along, and that's what we talk about in our in our program. We we learn what those are, and then we play with them. Then we experiment. That would be the, the fun part. Of it it is so much fun. It oh, really is fun. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, this is, you know, when you're in class, you know, it's fun to he- hear about this, but I, I taught for a number of years, uh, computer, uh, use of computers and, and people want to get in and, you know, try it. You know, if you're going to learn Word or Excel or one of my best was Photoshop. I love teaching Photoshop because it's like, Hey, let's let's play with this. Make a picture, turn it around, flip it around, do all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. One of the things that you said, which I think is really interesting too, one of, one of my uh, takeaways from teaching was uh, that really people are, do have a, like a primary audio. They're verbally they like to learn uh, verbally. Sight. I'm a I'm a visual learner. Other people have to like actually touch it, play with it. Uh, to do it. So when I'm teaching computers, I, it really became really kind of crystal clear as to when when the student was having trouble. Then I would one of my first questions was to discern whether this they needed to hear me say it, or they needed to see me draw it, or we just needed to try it on the computer so that they could learn that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a, I had a boss who was an absolute verbal learner. And we were going through this really challenging thing to teach instructors. And he said, so, Laura, listen one more time. I'll say it really slowly. I said, I don't care how slowly you say it. I need you to draw it on the board. <laughs> it's like, you don't get it. And he was an instructor. They, uh, so that, that is interesting uh, on how we learn. One of the things that I, I want to uh, turn to um, one of the things we discussed while we were on the break was is whether we were going to manifest Theo. And, and for those in my listening audience, um, I didn't specifically invite uh, Sheila here to demonstrate her, uh, her ability, but you always have a chance to do that. And Marcus, maybe you want, there's a free seminar, free webinar coming up where you can actually participate true absolutely and we'd love to invite everybody listening to come join us it's complimentary uh it's next tuesday uh the 19th uh, at five o'clock pacific time and it's going to be a really unique program it's uh, we have a uh ask theo live tv that we do a couple times every month typically uh this particular ask theo live tv is going to be very special because we're going to do a global live guided meditation with theo guiding us collectively from from you know just a whole bunch of people gathered from around the world so that's going to be really fun and then the other thing we're going to be doing laura is we're going to be doing a q a with sheila and also a q a with theo on the spiritual and psychic exploration with theo mentoring program that starts the following week on the 26th that we were just talking about right before yeah. the break uh so it's going to be a a great opportunity for new people so if you go to asktheo.com you'll see a name and email address at the top of the page. Just put your name and email address in. We'll get you in the invitation list. And that'll put you on the list to be invited to come join us. There's a couple of free gifts there for you too, a guided meditation and an audio program. But that'll get you on the list. Uh, we'll send you an invite for yeah, next John, Tuesday. And then it's also interactive. So a lot, several people John, get promoted. I, I, I've, I've been to a number of your seminars. Yeah. And it's absolutely, I mean, it's once you meet Theo and you get a chance to chat in or talk to Marcus and ask a question uh, and Theo can answer that. It's, it's, it's just a wonderful experience. Now for the audience, some of our audience are 
verbal learners. So I'm going to very slowly say the website. It's A-S-K-T-H-E-O.com. Ask Theo. We say it so much that it just sounds like SEO. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that, Lori. So that I want to make sure they have a chance to do that. Um, One of the things that I want, I guess we've got about 15 minutes left. I've had an absolute absolute pleasure being with you guys and you're real honest human beings. You know, I, and and Sheila, one of the things I, 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 I think was funny. We first met in a Mary Morrissey seminar and, and somebody had pointed you out to me and in this way, they said, that's Sheila. That that is Sheila. It's like, yeah. (laughs) It's like, okay, okay. So I went I, I went to bed that night. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was kind of not sleeping. I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll Google you. And I found YouTube, a, a Theo thing on YouTube. And I was just like, oh my God. So that's what she meant. And I came down the next day. It was like, I know who you are. It's like, who? It was like, yeah. And and the reason I bring this up is because is we've had, had many a meal together. Uh, Marcus and I flew together. Um, Part of what I want people to understand is, is how you got into this. Uh, Marcus, one of the stories I want you to tell is, because I think it's really kind of interesting. Imagine that you're Marcus and you meet Sheila, but you don't really know much about Sheila. So you go on your first date and then Sheila tells you a little bit about what she does. <laughs> You're like, really? <laughs> well, well, hey, Laura, I gotta, I gotta turn that story around on you a little bit, only okay. because, only because, I, I knew of her, because I read her first book. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I had read the Fifth Dimension Channels to a New Reality, but I will tell you a real fun short story that after we got together, so we went, we went. Up, uh, this is a long story. I'm gonna make it really, really short. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got together. We went on our first date in the Havasupai Indian Reservation down the Grand Canyon came out five days later. That was our first date. We, she had come to town, done a speaking engagement. I had met her. We'd become friends. And, and then we went down and we fell in love, came back out. I asked her what we're going to do on our second date. And she says, I don't date. So we decided to get married. I know that's our a short <laughs> version, this is, this is a very, a, a very short oh, version. Okay, of, well, uh, then, let's just get but, but the funny, the, but, but the funny part to what you just said was when I was sitting with my then nine-year-old daughter and my mom and dad, at dinner shortly after Sheila and I had made the decision to, to get married and move in together and just kind of blow our families out of the water because nobody could figure out what in the world was going on, basically. And I said to my mother, I told my mother I was getting, getting married, and she said, you know, she, and my parents are awesome, and I, she said, um, what does she do for a living? <laughs> well, that's interesting. And I just blurted it out. I thought, you know, why am I, they're going to find out some point in time that their, their son's crazy. So um, I told her that she's a direct voice of spiritual medium. She's a direct voice channel for 12 archangels collectively known as Theo. And you could see my mother like, like, oh, and then she said, because I had a nine-year-old daughter sitting next to me, Shh, like, Hey, we got a kid in the room here. We can't talk about this stuff with the kid, you know? Uh, that is a true story. And since then, my mom and dad were, have always been awesome over the years. Uh, they've come to many Theo events. They love Sheila, love Theo. And, and we've had a, a wonderful you know, time and they embrace Sheila as, as part of our family immediately. So it was just kind of fun to see the, <laughs> where we've come from, I guess you could say. Uh, Sheila, one of the things I want to ask you is because, you know, I, I mean, put, put yourself back to when you had the near death experience and then, then you're building this connection to Theo, but you also have a life and, and you're, you're going to move on. And, you know, I think in in some regard, there's that part of human life where you're thinking, okay, I got to go out and get a job and I got to make a living and do this, that, and the other thing. And eventually you made a decision to say, Hey, Theo is part of me. And we're going to like build a business, go down, down this road. Was it, Tell us a little bit about Pretheo and then then how, how you kind of transitioned into, oh my God, I'm going to mentor the world here. Well, Pretheo, I was a 
a mom of small children. And my near-death experience was at the birth of my youngest child. I had pulmonary embolism, and I wasn't expected to live through the day. I was in intensive care. I had a miraculous healing by Jesus in intensive care, which was a catalyst for my opening. And when I got out of the hospital, it was probably six months after I was out of the hospital, I started having all kinds of psychic phenomena happening to me, internally, externally, and when I was in intensive care, I had a clairaudient experience when the room became extremely bright and I focused at the end of my bed and Jesus was standing there. And I heard in my inner mind hearing a distinct male voice say, remember my child, you are loved. And then I felt this warmth go through the entirety of my body and I felt as if I could take a deep breath. I only had a tiny portion of my right lung that was functional at that point. And I felt like an elephant was sitting on my chest. And I felt like I could breathe. And then I started getting better to the surprise of the doctors. And then I had all of this phenomena happening to me after I was home out of the hospital with a brand new baby and two other little kids. And it, it was just crazy pants, as you can imagine. This was 1969. These things were not spoken of. I didn't go into social situations and say, guess what I can do? Yeah. <laughs> um, but they t- told me that people would be coming and they would be sending them. And then I worked with scientists and they tested me for my psychic ability, which gave me a good housekeeping seal of approval. You're not yeah. crazy. You're psychic (laughs) and you know it just developed they told me I would write a book and I said you know who you're talking to (laughs) and they said and then the fifth dimension was written um in collaboration with with the angels and so it's just evolved Laura um I could not not do it because in the intensive care I said hey God give me a job I'll do anything because I had a brand new baby and two other little kids And I wanted to be their mother. And so what kept me going all these years was that commitment. Now, had God given me a roster of job opportunities? (laughs) I don't know in that moment that I would have chosen this one. Yeah. Um, But I'm sure glad I did. It's been amazing. And it has. And you're blessed. A bunch of people, me included. You know, it's interesting in your experience. Uh, when I face the gender transition, it I can only imagine there's uh, some similarities in that you know it in your heart. You kind of know what's happening. You kind of see that, but then it's like you say, it's 1969. It's like I can't really like do that, can I? I mean, I mean, what will people think and you know, mm-hmm. Oh my God, what, how, how is this going to work? This is not going to work. I mean, that, no one does this. And for me, you know, in the gen, in the gen transition, I'm here I'm a top pilot in the United States Air Force. I'm a macho, macho, top gun pilot guy. And then all of a sudden there's, you want to do what? <laughs> and exactly. I'm, married, I'm married and we have three kids. Uh, Annie and I were, were only two years married. It's a second marriage for both of us. And uh, we, we were brand new married and she was over in Okinawa and I was in Guam and it's like hey honey a strangest thing happened the other day <laughs> it's like what but the reason I bring that up is is because for all these people that are that are sitting out there and listening and they maybe they're going through this same kind of conversation in in response to the pandemic hey maybe I'm not going to go back to my job maybe I maybe this is a chance for me to do that thing that I always wanted to do. Uh, I'm really big on the soul having a desire to do something, that everybody has a gift. And for me, my gender transition seemed like, like no, 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 we're, we're, no, 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 we're not going to go down that road. There's no goodness that's going to come down that road. But after a while, I kind of realized that, no, you know, this is a gift I was given. And it's not all bad 
there can be a lot of good that comes out of this. And so, and I, and I have, uh, one of the things that I, I know that you've heard is, is that your words turn into your thoughts, turn into your beliefs, turn into your actions, which manifest your world. I, that's part of what I teach as well. And, and when Annie and I found this gender transition, most everybody we knew called it a curse. This is a curse. You can't, you know, this is going to be the worst thing that has ever happened to you in your life. And we're like, boy, that's not a really good spot to start. You know, I, I think we, maybe we should change how we're going to start that. So we, we changed it and said, this is our gender blessing that everybody told us, you got to get divorced. It's like, but we just got married. We don't want to get divorced. It's like, you got it. It's like, we're going to change that. We're going to change our picture. And we change it by changing our words, which change our thoughts, change our beliefs. And, and we manifested 34 great years <laughs> together. So, so to me, I think when people start thinking about their intuition and, and their ability to uh, connect to you and to Theo, this may be a, a time where you hear my radio show and you go, I need to explore that. Well, you know, Laura, there are very similar things because in the outer world, a lot of judgment. And to navigate that, you just have to stay true to yourself and know your own truth. And really, you know, when it gets down to that old saying, um, the good opinions of others just doesn't count because nobody knows what another soul's here to do. Nobody knows what another soul's path is. And so we... When we're in judgment, we are seeing other people's lives through the lenses we see our own. So if we can't imagine doing something, having the courage or doing something like that, then how could you or how could they, you know, and we need to stop that. You know, Theo says, um, you can tell the difference between judgment and observation. Observation is neutral. Oh, isn't that interesting? I wonder how that works, you know, or we're judging and there's an emotional charge to a judgment. So we need to look at that within ourselves. But having the courage to say yes to your soul's calling, that's what you're inspiring people to do, Laura. I think that's fantastic because we all have, we're all unique individuals and we do, we have our own soul's path. And to listen to that. Well, and that, you know, to, um, from all the, the work we've done and, and the training that I've had, that, to me, that's kind of my message is that you came down to this planet. Uh, there is a meaning for you to be here. And there's something that you should be developing. And and it's, it's tough. You know, we grew up in an industrial model of, you know, you need to fit in. You don't need to be different. You need to follow the plan. When the boss says do this, you jump. And, you know that, and we kind of just get in the groove. And then you're 60 years old, and you go, "Oh, oh my God, I, I'm about to retire." And it's like, "Who am I? What am I doing?" And and my message is, "Hey, let's let's work on that long before we get to retirement. That's not the age." See, I hate to say this, but go figure. It's almost over. We got. We got to end the show. Oh, darn. <laughs> There's more. We will have you back. And, and this is the end of every show. Is We'll have you back because you haven't really talked about all the other cool stuff that I want to. But I do thank you, uh, you both, for being here. Thank you very much. And, uh, again, ASKTHEO.com next Tuesday is a chance for you to do that free. And you can connect to them, both of these fine people uh, there. So that's going to end. Our show for today, this is Laura Meek's show. And remember, dream on, fly high, live adventurously. You only get one of these good adventures. <laughs> so let's, let's do the best we can with what we have. And I look forward to seeing you in two weeks right here at noon on Talk on Transformation Talk Radio. Laura Meek's show. Have a great one. You've been listening to The Laura Meek Show. Dream on, fly high, live adventurously on Transformation Talk Radio. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you'll join us next month 
as Laura helps you find your unique gifts so you can bring them to the world. For more information on Laura Meeks or to listen to past shows, visit her website at flyhighliving.com. Check out her hit Dream On 12-week course where you get the personal attention you need to fly high in your new life.